This video shows you why the Milwaukee Bucks playoff depth chart is terrifying. Giannis just snapped Kareem's franchise record for playoff triple doubles, but even when the reigning finals MVP has an off night shooting the ball, Milwaukee's array of talented role players can pick them up. From the NBA's second most efficient three-point shooting center in Bobby Portis to a few more lethal killers from deep range like Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton, and Wesley Matthews, along with Drew Holiday's backup and the former Phoenix Sun Javon Carter, the reigning champions have had more than enough insurance to make up for the absence of Chris Middleton. The Bucks' defense is giving up just 94.2 points per night through six playoff games. Their defensive rating is 10 points lower than any other playoff team. Does that mean they're on the course for a repeat? Stay tuned for all that and more. Right before that, just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Deep Low Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving couldn't muster up one win against Boston, but without Chris Middleton, Giannis Adetokounmpo's 24 points, 12 assists, 13 rebounds, and two blocks fueled Milwaukee to a 12-point victory to open the series against those same seemingly unbeatable Celtics. Entering the series against Milwaukee, Boston's 119.2 offensive rating only trailed the Golden State Warriors and Philadelphia 76ers for the third best in the postseason. It only took one game for Milwaukee to dwindle that Celtics O rating to 112.9, which now ranks the Celtics offense below the eliminated Denver Nuggets for the ninth best among all 16 playoff teams. Making life miserable for Boston's best player in Jason Tatum, Milwaukee's defender sped him up by guarding behind him or crowding his space, forcing Tatum to give up the rock. In transition, watch how Giannis bolts back on defense from out of nowhere to force a missed layup on Tatum. That has to be a dunk from JT. Here, Brooke Lopez flies over to the right corner to contest his shot, then Giannis clamps up and forces a miss in an isolation. Next, Lopez and Portis sandwich Tatum, putting him in jail. There were lackadaisical plays and shots that'll make next time around, but I was really impressed by the Bucks' collective effort and execution to clamp up not only Tatum, but the entire Celtics roster. This lethal rim protection from Giannis after a weak side rotation on the back end just goes to show how underrated of a shot blocker this man is. The Bucks forced 18 turnovers yesterday and scored 27 points off those giveaways, which in turn opened up their offense. The rebounding battle was also crucial, as Lopez, Giannis, and Portis all had double-figure boards against Boston in Game 1, who dominated the offensive boards in their first-round series against Brooklyn. Coach Bud spoke on that last point specifically, saying the offensive rebounding is something they had success with and can swing games, end quote. Ever since the beginning of 2022, Boston's held the best record in the NBA by far. That success translated into a first-round sweep of the star-studded Brooklyn Nets. The Jays combined to average 50 points per game in that series against Brooklyn's lackluster defense. You can only imagine the massive difference it was for Boston on Sunday afternoon, to go up against a championship-bred Milwaukee defense as opposed to Brooklyn coach Steve Nash's game plan. That massive adjustment for the Seas showed up on the stat sheet as the Bucks held Boston to a brutal 89 offensive rating and 33% from the field to steal home court advantage. The Celtics had the lead early and felt like they'd roll to victory like they did in round one, which ultimately ended up shocking them even more when the Bucks turned up the pressure Mike Budenholzer's strategy was to make the Celtics a jump-shooting team to utterly crowd the restricted area and force Tatum, Brown, and company to live or die off shots from beyond the arc. Cutting off angles and shutting down the paint as an option for attacking players is the style of defense Milwaukee's played for really the better part of two-plus years, as the Bucks have built up a reputation of intelligently guarding the drive first and foremost, while giving up a ton of three-point attempts and living with their effort to quickly run over and contest those deep-range attempts. Considering Boston hauled up 53s yesterday, it's safe to say the Bucks executed their coach's game plan. The Bucks' defense held the Seas to an abysmal 34% shooting from the field. Budenholzer's most strategic defensive adjustment was picking up full court and having his guys apply the utmost amount of man-to-man -man pressure even before Celtic ball handlers crossed the timeline. The DPOI Marcus Smart played outstanding on both ends, being a team-high plus three, but while he's a solid facilitator, Marcus is far from a natural-born playmaker. 
Boston lacks a true floor general, so to expose that as much as possible, that's why Milwaukee was picking up full court. Most importantly, that disrupted Boston's sets while funneling them into the best defensive front line in the NBA. Only 22% of Boston's points were two-pointers. That's not a good recipe for success. I expect Boston to play much sharper in a must-win game two at home throughout the 48 minutes, but Milwaukee proved why they're the reigning champs in the opening game of this series. And if Boston had any type of ego about their success in the second half of the season, they learned quickly they have to let go of that. Giannis is of course a generationally great defender and slasher with his shooting guard-esque speed while standing at 6 feet 11 inches tall with a 7 foot 3 wingspan and exceptional footwork. Strictly in terms of physicality, Giannis is the most dominant player in this series by a long shot. Don't forget this man is widely regarded as the best player in the world. Boston's going to have to match the undisputed future Hall of Fame impact of the reigning finals MVP by playing with every bit of heart and all-out hustle that they can muster up. Stepping up into the role of second fiddle, we have to give some credit to Drew Holiday, who led Game 1 in scoring with 25 points while continuing the lockdown clamps on the other end, which he makes a living off. In terms of the supporting cast, Game 1 saw the Bucks get 29 minutes out of Wes Matthews, who was a free agent in December, 29 minutes out of Grayson Allen, who they received in exchange for two second round picks, and also 22 minutes out of Javon Carter, who got waived mid-season by the Brooklyn Nets. Shockingly, Javon was a game high plus 25. Fan favorite and the second most efficient three-point shooting center only behind Carl Anthony Towns in Big Bobby Portis dropped a crucial 15 and 11 alongside Brooke Lopez in the front court, who had three blocked shots. We can't forget about Pat Connaughton, who hit some big shots in last year's title run, and he's also been really good off the pine this year, as Pat's one of seven Milwaukee players averaging at least eight points per game in 2022's playoffs. But I'm just some Raptor fan. I want to know some opinions from the Milwaukee faithful, but whether you're a Bucks fan or not, in your opinion, who's the most lethal Milwaukee role player? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Michael White, who says, I'm going to stick with Warriors in six. However, if they come out in game two and beat Memphis, it might be either a sweep or 4-1. I just don't see Memphis winning two there on the road, plus John Morant has not performed well enough on the road like he has at home. I also doubt if Memphis are going to get the foul calls once they get to Golden State by game three. Appreciate every take. I hope you have a great one. Deflo signing off.